Good afternoon, um, BTBTED second year students who are currently taking EDO 5, which is, which is the technology for teaching and learning one. Last, this is your course facilitator. This is uh, Sir Kenji E. Merenciano. Sir Kenji is spelled as K E N G, as in goat, not J. Uh, sometimes most of the students. Uh, Medyo na murder yung name ko. Pag nag-submit ng requirements, pag nag-send ng ang, uh, pag nag-message sa akin, or correction lang po ano, uh, yun, yung pangalan ko po is Kenji. It's capital K-E-N-G. It's GOAT, not J-I-E-E Merenciano. And I am your course facilitator for EDOC 5 course. And today, we will be having our uh, uh, course orientation. For in, I'll be presenting the course syllabus, uh, which uh, which is uh, uh, me is uh, which has uh, its uh, learning contents, uh, the learning outcomes. Uh, what are the learning outcomes for uh, technology for teaching and learning? Uh, the the topics to be covered. Uh, as well as the uh, mode of assessment, uh, including the course requirements and uh, grading system and my expectations for this uh, to you class this uh, first sem. Okay. So, once again, good afternoon class. Um, am I still audible? Is my voice clear? Please confirm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, thank sure. you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for your response. Yes, so thank I'm you. I'm going now to I'm going to present now the course syllabus for uh, EDOC 5 or the technology for teaching and learning one. Okay. Edo so class, uh, may I know if uh, you can see or if if it's visible on your part what's on your screen? Please confirm. Yes, po. Yes, so, po. Thank you. Yes, we can see it. So, the uh, this is uh, our uh, Google Classroom. Okay, as, I, as what I've said last time, our Google Classroom is our is one of our official learning platform and uh, our uh, mode of instructional delivery effective this uh, school year or this first sem. As you can see, uh, you already experienced this uh, type of uh, learning tool um, um, which uh, as your uh, 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 material or uh, a learning tool for uh, for some or courses so here uh, I'll present the this this is the stream it's a part of the Google classroom which shows the uh, announcements and uh, information dissemination if Sir KG is not alone, if he leaves a message or an important announcement or, or, or let's say there is an urgent meeting um, that we need to convene. And the next tab is what we call the classwork. So the materials are already uploaded from the start up to the last topic. Okay, including your um, uh, exercises, quizzes, and exams. Exams and quizzes are password protected. Uh, we will open that or I, I'll inform you the code once uh, from the moment that you will take the exam or quiz or in even the your midterm and final examination. Okay. If you can still remember, I ask you to, uh, to uh, visit the classroom and try to accomplish this 
preliminary requirement. Okay? Uh, 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 it's very important. Uh, it is important thing. It is an important thing, I'm sorry, to, to uh, for each student to submit or upload their certificate or of registration or what we call the COR. COR uh, is your base is my is that serves as my basis that you are a bona fide or a bona fide student who is officially enrolled for uh, or or yeah a bona fide uh, busit student and you are officially enrolled uh, for this course. Okay, so I think. Uh, 46 out of 20 students uh, submitted uh, or uploaded their COR. Uh, this course, uh, uh, this Google Classroom uh, will uh, will be also utilized by uh, BTBTED GFD class. So, um, your course facilitator is handling two classes for one um, uh, course. Okay. So the uh, yung kaninang umaga uh, sila po yung bitibited uh, uh, GFD but I conducted a synchronous meeting since nagmeet na po kami or we had a an online meeting last last time. Hindi tayo nakapag-meet because of the bad weather. So we had a parang um ma- maulan, heavy rains and some of some of the areas uh, are uh, are experiencing frequent uh, bar, uh, brownout or power interruption. Okay. So, uh, I will now present the uh, course syllabus. Okay. Uh, class, can you see what's on our screen po? Uh, please confirm. Do I need do I need to zoom in? Yes para po. Mabasa po yung content. Class, is it cleared na po sa atin? yung ating course syllabus. Nawabasa naman po ba? Yes, sir. Sige. Thank you. Sige. So, this is our course syllabus. We all know that course syllabus is given, um, is provided by a faculty instructor uh, uh, during the start of, or during the first meeting. Your syllabus is your reference. Or it serves as the guide about the topics that you will encounter or experience. Or what what is the title of the course, the code, even the uh, the mode of assessment, uh, and the uh, the grading systems, and even the house rules or policies uh, about uh, his or her methods or approach. And I know you will be future educators. So it's uh, uh, you can consider this as your guide on how to prepare an instruction material, a lesson, or uh, a guide, a course guide, or a syllabus. Okay. So EDOC Five uh, Technology for Teaching and Learning One is offered during first sem, and based on uh, based on uh, the given schedule. Uh, MWF 7.30 to 9 is for, uh, sorry, nagkaroon ng, uh, con, uh, I, I, I stand to be corrected, mali po yung na-input kong schedule. Yung, yung 7.30 to 9 na MWF, that is for uh, GFD 2B students. And sa atin po naman is uh, MWF 1 to 2.30 p.m. Okay? So, this course has three units credit. And this type of course is only a lecture, okay? Unlike some uh, major courses, uh, it's a combination of lecture and laboratory. Yung course facilitator po natin, ulitin ko po, ako po si Sir Kenji, Prof. Kenji E. Merenciano. Okay? Ang department chair natin is no other than Professor Christian C. Calleja. And our dean is Jonathan C. Aroko. So, ano ba yung um, um, EDOC 5 or Technology for Teaching and Learning? And as a, and as a BTBT student, why is it important? Why do we to study this course and what are the learning expectations or 
what are the things that a student will acquire once he or she finish this course so technology for teaching and learning one uh, is a three unit intra introductory course that explores basic knowledge and skills and values so these are the three domains right if you are if you studied or if you uh, if you experienced a course in curriculum development you will uh, 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 do we have three domains of learning we have the cognitive psychomotor and affective when we say uh, cognitive this pertains to knowledge how a student process information and how students learn okay thus the second one is learning by acquisition of skills um this is the psycho this refers to psychomotor and values these are your affective domains so the three domains in the use of technology for teaching and learning not only that this course includes ict ict class stands for information and communication technology policies and safety issues the use of media and technology in various areas aside from that we will tackle on the learning theories and principles these theories are grounded theories principles or philosophies on how to use the design uh, on the use and the design of learning lessons teaching and learning experiences types of assessments or assessment tasks that utilize appropriate traditional and innovative technologies with social ethical and legal responsibility so technology for teaching and learning one is what we call educational technology the use of technology for teaching and learning okay we know what technology is technology is simply a product of science or simply an applied science so when we say science is a systematized body of information or knowledge that derives from careful in, uh, investigation uh, before you you come you come up with a conclusion or uh, a result which is facts not uh, not only marites okay um ang technology for teaching and learning ito yung pag-aaralan natin ang mga iba't ibang ICT policies paano ba gamitin ang media kasi at your age diba at ito itong generation na to we are most of us here are burst in technology we will in fact we are too dependent in technology to give you an example um pagkagising natin ba uh, usually uh, ang iba maghihilamos pupunta sa CR pero some of us now hinahanap agad kung saan nakalagay yung cellphone diba or your mobile devices that's how we are too dependent in technology okay. so technology has an advantage it's, it has also pitfalls later as you go along with the subject you will understand the different uh, uh, the advantage uh, benefits of technology at the same time its downside or the negative impact okay um so okay ito yung ating course description and let us now proceed with the learning outcomes these are your these are our expectations of what the students will learn after uh, the, uh, you finish this course we have five course learning outcome by the way am i still audible can you still hear me yes sir yes, okay sir. thank you so the, the the five learning outcomes talks about number one what is what are ICT policies in issues we know how to use technology some of us are savvy okay. magaling uh, we are burst sa mga ganitong devices but some of us doesn't know how to use technology responsibly okay. kasi paggamit ng technology may kaakibat po yan ng, ng accountability and responsibility hindi na pwede gamitin mo siya kasi alam mo, dapat um, alam mo at alam mo din yung limitasyon ang madapat tandaan sa tamang paggamit ng teknolohiya. 
Second class, pag-aaralan, pag-aaralan po natin dito is you're going to identify the grounded theories, the philosophies and principles applied in the design and development of lesson through uh, appropriate media and technologies intended for teaching and learning. To, uh, to give you an advanced information, ang EDUC 5 Technology for Teaching and Learning 1 is uh, after this, if, if you pass this course, it's a continuation para sa EDUC 9. Kasi ang EDUC 9 class, pagdating ng second sem, pag-aaralan nyo ang Technology for Teaching and Learning 2. Okay? So, continuation siya. Ang EDUC 5 is uh, it's more on theories. It's more on principles. It's more on um, uh, identifying, uh, understanding about the importance of technology, uh, uh, how the how to be uh, how to be a responsible student, and that by by studying the social, ethical, and legal responsibility. Pagdating yun ng second sem, lahat ng to, natutunan ninyo sa EDUC 5, i-apply no i-apply na po natin siya sa EDUC 9. So, ang EDUC 9 po is application of the theories and principles in even, which includes the policies, the responsibility, the learning experiences and assessment. Kasi po, pagdating nyo ng second SEM, gagawa kayo ng sarili nyong IEC material, instructional material, devices, or, uh, or, or uh, module, or, or or a workbook. Depende po sa topic na pipiliin ninyo. So, application na po ang, edu, ang EDUC 9 builds from what you've learned in EDUC 5. Another course learning outcomes that you will experience is in, to integrate media and technology in various content areas. Okay. The fourth is uh, formulate teaching and learning experiences and assessment tasks using appropriate and innovative technology. So, you, you here, you will study technology in application to education. Ano ba ginagamit ang technology sa pagtuturo? We know that technology plays a vital role. Diba? Because of, of, of technology, we can comprehend the lessons or topics delivered efficiently or easily on the part of the students. The information is at the tip of our fingers or just a matter of one click. Kasi class, during our time, uh, let's say, uh, a research course, pag uh, pinapadata gathering kami, may pinapalap sa aming assignment, ay may, pinagawa, may pinapagawa sa aming assignment, pumupunta kami sa library. So, doon kami naghahanap ng mga libro or other references or materials na mapagkukunan namin ng information. Okay. Unlike now, ba, students are uh, using technology for uh, for gathering or for uh, uh, for learning new things. We have now the YouTube. We have now uh, social media. We have different platforms or learning platforms. Okay. Uh, if you will observe, Compare yung mga, yung mga bata uh, during their early days or times um, 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 compared to now, diba? Most of the uh, young generations, yung mga bata ngayon, ang gagaling na mag-English. They speak fluently. Kumbaga, ang, gag- ang gagaling nila magsalita. So, ang tawag ko dyan, nagpapasalamat tayo sa YouTube Academy. Diba? Kasi sa YouTube, ang daming pwede nyo matutunan. Kaya even yung mga bata can now browse, can now easily navigate the the, the channel, the uh, uh, the platform, or the apps. But mas per sila ngayon. Okay. And kaya ngayon, um, yung curriculum natin na merong vernacular or mother tongue, nahihirapan yung mga bata na natuto magsalita ng English uh, kasi uh, we have this mother tongue uh, curriculum. Okay? So, ito, ito naman yung mga cons niya. Okay. 
So another thing is we will study this one of the important topics or outcomes na patutunan ng estudyante is how to be uh, responsible net netizen. Okay. Uh, what are the netiquettes of using these technology tools and resources? So these are the five learning outcomes that the students will learn after he or she finish this course. So let us now proceed to the learning content or the topics for this syllabus. So first, what we are doing now is an orientation to the BMGO. We know what's BMGO. BMGO stands for the Vision, Mission, Goals and Objectives of our institution, the Biko University. And again, what we're doing now is we are having an orientation in the use of the course syllabus, uh, course guide, uh, instructional materials, and the likes. And since uh, I discussed already or, or presented to you our mode of delivery. So here, for the instructional delivery, gagamit tayo or I adapt natin yung blended learning. So, blended learning po has three kinds. We have on-site face-to-face class and we have uh, synchronous or asynchronous uh, distance learning. So after, after this topic, okay, last, um, in a short while po, ano, I'll cut you muna kasi may uh, someone is calling, I think the dean is calling, may, okay, stand by po muna tayo, no? Dali lang po. Hi okay, class, can you still hear me? Or are you, yes, are you still with me? Thank you. So let's, yes, con sir. So let's continue the presentation. Okay. So, saan tayo natapos? Okay. So after the learning content, we will now proceed to the introduction to technology okay. for... Okay po. Uh, introduction to technology for teaching and learning. 
So, ano ba yung uh, tinatawag nating uh, technology for teaching and learning? Uh, when you say technology, it assures in the fundamental structural changes that can be uh, integral to achieving significant improvements in productivity. So, it is used to support both teaching and learning. Uh, technology class infuses classrooms with the use of the digital learning tools such as computers and handheld devices, expands course offerings, experiences, and learning materials. With the use of technology for teaching and learning, it supports learning almost 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It sometimes, it, it not sometimes, but it builds 21st century skills. So what I'm trying to say now, class, these are the benefits or advantage of using technology for teaching learning. So another thing is it increases in student engagement and motivation. And definitely, when students engage or actively engage through the use of technology, the student accelerates learning. So in other words, class, technology has the power to transform teaching by ushering in a new model of connected teaching. This model links to teachers or links teachers to their students and to professional content, resources, and systems to help them improve their own instruction and personalized, personalized learning. So I am imagining now of what will be your future once you, you are part of the academy or you are an educator or a teacher. So it will be uh, a challenge for you now that we're in the new normal. Okay? Where you, through the use of technology, um, um, I, I consider that yung ating uh, situation ngayon, di ba, from, from, um, from uh, yung before natin, now that we are in the new normal, and later on, and everything goes back, um, that matatawag na natin tong better normal. So, it will be uh, part of our life na ang paggamit ng technology, lalong-lalo na sa, sa pagtuturo ninyo. So, dati, uh, traditional setting tayo. So, you come to school, you come to my room, and we discuss. Now, we are using technology through online, through distance learning, either synchronous or asynchronous. And this is how technology benefits teachers and students in the concept of teaching and learning. Okay? So, ito yung mga topics na pag-aralan natin sa introduction to technology. What is technology? How does it differ from ICT? And uh, ano ba yung educational technology and pinagkaiba niya sa instructional technology? Here, sa Unit 1, uh, pag-aralan ninyo uh, the comparison between technology in education and technology of education. Okay? And aside from that, we will uh, discuss about the roles of ICT in teaching and learning. Okay? After the introduction, another interesting topics are the safe, uh, poly, ICT policies and safety issues in teaching and learning. Okay. ICT is a scientific technological in engineering discipline and management technique used in handling information. So, in handling information, in information dissemination, uh, in its application is an example of ICT. It is part of our lives for which uh, for for the last few decades affecting our society as well as individual life. ICT class is now broadly used in educational world teacher student administrator and every people related to education are pop, pop, popularly i'm sorry popularly use ict teachers use ict for making teaching learning process easy and interesting so marami ang applications ng ict sa buhay natin hindi lang sa ac for academic purposes but for business for military uh, lahat naka-anchor or may, uh, may, may factor ang technology. Okay? So, uh, aside from that, um, 
pag-aralan natin yung ICT policies. Uh, in uh, 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 policies that are applicable to teaching and learning. Because ICT can impact students learning where teachers are digitally literate and understand how to integrate into the curriculum. When you want every student to enumerate national ICT policies each time you teach, understanding the existing and planned national policies related to ICT may help you achieve your goal. Okay? So, kailangan natin pag-aralan yung iba't ibang mga policies. Uh, para ma-address natin uh, yung, yung individual needs of students the, the, using technology in, in its implications for student assessment and teacher learning uh, usage. Pag sinabi natin national ICT policy, it talks about policy put into place so that the government and stakeholders can have access to information that is committed to bringing Digital technology to all individuals and communities. Later on, pag-aralan natin kung anong ICT policy ang ina-adapt natin sa Philippine setting or sa ating bansa. And not only that, we will focus also on um, theories and principles. Ano ba yung mga under, underpinning philosophies or principles uh, sa paggamit ng technology? It, that uh, use and design of technology driven learning lessons here you will encounter the dales cone of experience as an example of a principle okay. so uh okay wait a minute wala yung aking material nakikita pa rin class yung aking material or yung ating syllabus Yes, okay. Okay. Yes, okay. Um, ang Dell's Experience Class, to give you a, a simple overview, it is a model that incorporates several theories related to instructional design. Dell's Codom Experience is an instructional design. Um, uh, it was uh, popularized or theorized by Ed Edgar Dale. That's the proponent. At according to Dale's Code of Experience, learners retain, retain more information by what they do as opposed to what they heard, read, or observed. So, sa, sa, sa Dale's Code of Experience, pag-aaral natin how students acquire information, how students learn or retain information. Because according to Dale, mas mas uh, mas natuto yung bata kapag may practical or hands-on application. This is true based on my experience. The second Kenji po is nagtuturo ng uh, ng uh, electronics workshop or major courses sa uh, electronics. And yung yung course description ng ng ng, cor ng courses is more on practical or my um, hands-on laboratory. However, that time pandemic, um, nahihirapan ako magturo ng mga lessons or, or magpakontak ng activities na walang laboratory equipment or material. And it's, it is also a struggle. That's why most of the students complain. Or, na, na understand namin yung mga topics na tinuturo mo or binibigay, pero hindi namin siya na-apply. Kasi as a pagkakaintindi po namin, meron tayong laboratory. At ay tama naman yung 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 reason ng estudyante however we are bounded by the admin order or the memorandum order na last year po for the past two years wala tayong choice but uh, let's continue learning okay what important kung hindi tayo makapag-laboratory at least kahit katiting or konti meron matutunan yung estudyante so ito yung principle ng Dale's Conum Experience na this is how a student uh, understand a topic or learns or process or retain information. Much better eh, sa kung narin kung narinig mo yung in, yung information na basa mo, hindi siya uh, much much better if you experience or learn uh, or merong kam practical application. Okay? So another thing is na pag-aralan natin is about uh, Kasi uh, meron tayong TPAC or the technology, uh, what do you call this? 
uh, it's an acronym for uh, technological, pedagogical, uh, pedagogical, and content knowledge. Yan ang meaning ng TIPAC. So, sa madaling sabi, TIPAC is a technology integration framework that identifies three type of knowledge. Instructors need to combine for a successful integration. So, we have the technological. Um, pedagogy means the art of teaching. The process of, of providing instruction and content knowledge. Um, so, yan ang ating uh, isa sa mga uh, princip- principles or tools na pag-aaralan sa EDUC 5. Another, we have uh, Assure. Assure model is one of the instructional design. Actually, kinukompare siya sa isa pang model na tinatawag natin na ADI. ADI is an acronym for uh, Analysis, Design, Develop, Implement, and Evaluate. Samantalang ang Assure, uh, uh, ang, ang acronym niya is A is to analyze learners. S is to state the standards and objectives. I'm just giving you the overview ano, para may insight kayo kung ano yung mga pag-aaralan natin dito sa uh, Technology for Teaching and Learning 1. Another S is to select methods and media. U is to utilize media and technology. R is to require learner participation. And E is to evaluate and revise. These are popular models that guide instructional designers. Kasi kayo, later on, pagdating nyo ng EDUC 9, you will be instructional designers or developers kung paano gumawa ng ICT, IEC, or teaching materials na ituturo sa mga uh, students. Okay? So, and after that, et, et, eto na yung at uh, pupunta tayo sa midterm. Ito yung exciting part. So, dito tayo mag-exam or midterm examination. So, ang coverage niya is from um, introduction to, to TTL1, ICT policies and issues, Tools and principles and ICT in various content. I know. That's the coverage for midterm. After the midterm, pag-aralan naman natin ang ICT in various content areas. So here, we will discuss and tackle about the 21st century. So when you say 21st century class, to give you a simple definition, dali lang. Um, okay. When we say 24th century skills, these are 12 abilities that today's students need to succeed in their careers during the information age. So, ngayon second year kayo, uh, pa lang kayo, naiisip nyo na ba kung ano kaya ang mga kailangan naming skills para i-prepare kami para maging century workforce sa field of chosen career na magiging kami in the near future. So, sabi daw, mayroon tayong tinatawag na 12 abilities or what we call the 21st century skills. And part of this na pag-aaralan natin is about the technology, I, what do you call this, the literacy skills. Literacy skills talks about how to use information, media, and technology. Okay. So, we will tackle another set of design models. I think we have four. Uh, these are uh, GAINS 9 events, um, Bloom's Revised Taxonomy. So, dito, pag-aaralan nyo kung paano gumawa ng syllabus, particularly in uh, formulating the learning objectives. So, better gamitin itong taxonomy of classifications kung what appropriate terms Uh, na, na dapat nyong i-adapt i-apply sa paggawa ninyo ng uh, learning material. So, ADI, the middle principles of instruction. So, ito yung mga topics pa. So, technology enhanced teaching lesson exemplars, uh, digital learning resources, distance learning, um, technology tools in a collaborative environment. Sa distance learning pala class, Okay, sa distance learning, um, um, 
uh, also called as distance education, e-learning, or online learning. So these are forms of education in which the main elements include physical separation of teachers and students during instruction and the use of various technologies to facilitate student-teacher and student-to-student -student communication. What we are doing now is a good example of distance learning. So we will dig deeper and try to comprehend or, or understand ano ba yung mga dapat natin i-consider if a teacher will conduct distance learning and as a student, paano kayo matu mas matututo with this kind of setup? So ito po yung mga pag-aaralan natin sa EDUC 5 Technology for Teaching and Learning 1. So aside from that, so sa Unit 5, pag-aaralan din natin ang Innovative Technologies for Teaching, Learning, and Assessment. So we will be using technology or ICT in assessing the learning outcomes or 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 paggamit ng mga online learning assessment tools or ICT tools. Okay. And the last part or the last topic for this uh, syllabus is the social, ethical, and legal responsibilities in the use of technology tools and resources. Okay, dito pag-aralan natin ang um, ang tawag dito, ang digital citizenship. Okay, pag sinabi nating digital citizenship, to give you a, a background, uh, this refers to the ability to engage positively, critically, and competently in the digital environment. It's it pertains to drawing on the skills of effective communication and creation. To practice forms of social participation that are respectful of human rights and dignity through the responsible use of technology. Ag sinabing digital citizenship, it is to simplify in simplest term is how to use technology responsibly. Okay, and not only that, we will talk uh, more about. Um, um, intellectual property rights. Uh, uh, most of us has an idea that comes into their mind. And the question is, how that, uh, uh, yung idea mo, paano ba yun mapoprotektahan? Halimbawa, may naisip kang um, poem para sa yung minamahal. Later on, yung nasulat mong poem, yung nagawa mo, somebody uh, ginamit or spoken poetry or ginamit sa ibang bagay. So, somebody copied your work. So, ang mahirap pa, hindi ka makakapagreklamo ng basta-basta. Hindi mo ma-open up na sa akin, ako yung gumawa kasi wala kang basis. So, sinabi mo, ito yung sulat mo, walang, wala pa rin katibayan. Still lacking proof. Kasi sa as bitibited students, uh, lalo na kayo, may, di ba nasa, uh, nasa in incline kayo sa foods? May ginawa kayong uh, recipe na para sa inyo or ingredients or ano man yan. Um, it, it would be better that your idea should be protected. Okay. Kasi later on, pag, um, kapag uh, pag nagkagipitan, pag nagkaroon ng problem, if somebody copied your, your ingredients or material and gusto mo sana makahabol or makahanap ng claim, so dapat your, 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 your idea should be uh, put into copyright or uh, to, uh, through an intellect, intellectual property so that you are protected. Ito yung kulang sa atin. Diba? Kailangan, uh, uh, malimbawa, another set of example. Let's say you're a blogger. You're a social media influencer. Di ba pag, 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 pag nag-create ka ng content material or mga videos, di ba maganda lagyan ng background music? Ngayon kasi, uh, hin, uh, para ma-monetize yung video mo, yung content mo, kailangan dumaan siya sa copyright. Kapag yung music, kinamit mo ng walang paalam, hindi po mamomonetize ma 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 yung ginawa mong content. So, yan ang sinasabi nating intellectual property. Part of it is copyright. Okay, may, may titawag tayong copyrights issues. Diba? So, yan ang mga pag-aralan natin dito sa uh, EDUC 5. And ito pa yung interesting topic na gusto kong i-share din sa inyo is about, that is very timely and relevant nowadays. It's about cyberbullying. So, cyberbullying is a form of bullying. 
that takes place over digital devices like cell phones, computers, and tablets. It can occur through SMS, text, and apps. Alexa, stop. So, text and apps or online in social media, forums, or gamings where people can view, participate in, or share content. Lalo na sa mga, sa mga students na kagaya ninyo at your age. Madaming students, um, nag, nag, they undergo mental health problems, depression, because they are bullied. by some of uh, res- res- uh, mga ng mga uh, people in social media. Diba? Kasi social media, maganda sana siyang uh, gamitin as information dissemination. Sa so, totoo lang, um, most nowadays, we're, I'm really toxic sa ating um, platform na ginagamit. Kasi it, sa social media, maraming naluloko, maraming fake news nag-spread out, Um, maraming um, students nagkakaroon na, or people experience uh, depression, mental health issues is before uh, some of us, uh, some of some of some of the people now um, think of mental health as a joke, ba? Diba? Ginagawa ng memes, ginagawa ng kung ano ano, ba? Diba? So it's very timely here in Edoc 5 uh, teaching and learning one. Pag-aralan natin ang cyberbullying. Ano ba yung mga dapat uh, uh, dapat as 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 a netizen? Ano bang dapat kong gawin? How to use social media in an effective manner or way? Okay. Hindi um, for di ba? Hindi for para mag uh, magkaroon ng false content or misinformation sa tao or magcause or makakapanakit or cause harm to people. So kailan pa karala natin tong topic na to? So Uh, aside from that, netizens in cyberspace, netiquettes, social conventions, and online, ay uh, online, educational sites and portals, yung mga learning communities, kagaya ng Facebook, Twitter, webinar, Instagram, online resources, and dami ah, technology tools. So, ito yung coverage ng ating uh, syllabus. Okay? So, um, after the learning content, these are my course requirements. So, we have the types, we have the long test and midterm examination. So, ang ating midterm, based on our school calendar, ang schedule niya is 12 to 14, I think. So, sa atin po, naka-schedule tayo is October 12. And ang final examination naman po natin is December 14. Yes, so, ang, I think, ang last meeting natin is 14, probably 17 or 16. So, for my course requirements, these are the following. So, kailangan ko po ng mga outputs ninyo. Let's say short and long quizzes. Pag sinabing quizzes or perhaps an activities kagaya ng reflection, reaction, do a research or term paper. Uh, 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 ito pa rin yung sinasabi ko kanina, will fall under outputs per activity. Iba naman po yung short on and long quizzes. Another is you, you should uh, pass and take the midterm and final exams and projects. To anticipate, to give you an idea, ang project na gagawin natin for this time is you're going to create your own e-portfolio. Later on, as we go along with the subject or course, we will discuss or talk about this uh, one of the requirements. So, the next part is how CERCNG uh, breaks down or Distribute uh, the, uh, your grades. Take note, Sir Kenji is not a magician. Okay? Hindi po ako marunong mag-hocus-focus ng grade. Lahat po siya is the well-documented and it has a corresponding basis. So, here, upon looking at my grading system, tatlo lang po ang criteria na nakalagay dito. First, quizzes and activities, that is 40%. 30% are the term examination, meaning to say, your midterm and final. And the last one, which is also 30%, is the requirement or your project. So all in all, you have, uh, we have 100%. So ang rating po natin, um, midterm po is 30% or one third, and for tentative, uh, two thirds po or 70%. Yan po ang bearing or weight ng kada term. 
So, ito po yung aking references. To read in advance on, or do a research of some of the topics, you may consider these references sa ating syllabus. So, I think I'm done with my uh, syllabi or syllabus presentation in EDUC 5 Technology for uh, Teaching and Learning 1. So, class, uh, I think uh, let's... Uh, if you ha do you have some questions or clarifications about our uh, syllabus, you can unmute your audio. You are allowed to speak. Anybody? May I know your reactions? Or are you still with me? Hello? A few moments later. Das, are you still with me? Yes, cool, bro. Yes, sir. So, any, yes, sir. Do, do you have a reaction or comments or questions or clarifications about our syllabus? Or, or perhaps the topics that are uh, presented in our uh, Edu5 course or syllabus? Class? Anyone? Anybody? Hello? Lino po, sir. Wala po, sir. Okay. So, I think um, hearing none, uh, I therefore assume that uh, all the things that I presented, including the topics, the course expectations, the uh, uh, the grading systems are, I hope, clear sa atin. So, since I mentioned the, the syllabus, let me first uh, give you a profile about myself uh, para at least meron kayong idea uh, and my expectations sa inyo as my student. Uh, ako po si Sir Kenji E. Merenciano. I am a program advisor in electronics technology department. I am a, also a uh, affiliated faculty. Uh, bakit Sir Kenji from Bicet pero nagtuturo ng BTBTED? So, ako po ay affiliate faculty ng BTBTED department uh, assigned to teach uh, most of the professional courses in, uh, in in your program. And not only that, Sir Kenji po ay uh, also a uh, core faculty ng MEIE. Ang a MEIE po is a postgraduate or a master degree program sa uh, sa Busit. So MEIE stands for Master of Arts in Industrial Education. May dalawa pong major 'yan. Uh, major in IT or Instructional Technology and the other one is Technology in Livelihood Education or the TLD. Halimbawa, uh, let's say you finish your uh, your undergraduate course or this program and you are hired in an academic institution or nagtuturo kayo kasi part of the requirements for upgrading uh, is uh, at least for, for promotion and at the same time for, for professional growth most of the graduates pursue uh, masteral para mag-level up and para mag-upgrade yung learnings nila so after they pass the midterm uh, after they pass the board the board exam some of the graduates or uh, former students namin nag-aaral dito pa rin sa Pusit to have their MEIE course. Or, to, or, or they are currently taking the, their MEIE course. So that's part of career or professional growth. Kasi, as we all know, education is a continuous process. It doesn't stop or doesn't uh, end. Whether uh, uh, senior ka na or you're old enough, still, di ba? It doesn't mean to say that you're a graduate of a four-year or a five-year course. You know everything. Like, I don't believe that uh, in that statement. As we grow old, we still continue learning. Okay. And ang learning kasi o ang kalaman, ito yung isang bagay na hindi basta na mawawala or mananakaw. Okay. So it's very important to, uh, uh, to grow and learn. Okay. Lalo na sa course or field ninyo. Since most of you, alam ko ang iba sa atin ayaw magturo. Would like to engage some of us, would like to engage in other in business or would like to pursue another course or another career. 
it's okay, it's your choice. Nasa iyo po niyan. Pero some of us here, alam ko naman, kahit uh, kukonti, would like to teach or to be part of an institution or would like to work in DepEd or to be a plain teacher or a faculty. Nasa inyo po yan. Okay? So, um, uh, ulitin ko, I'm an ME faculty. Aside, aside from that, akala kasi, kasi ito yung misconception ng ilan. Bakit most of the prop or faculty hindi nag attend ng regular class or wala wala minsan hindi nag hindi nagko-conduct ng face to face or hindi nag klase or nag nagko-conduct ng lesson. Kasi po sa if, if you're a faculty from BU, hindi lang po instruction ang ginagawa mo or pinerform mo. Actually, Baker University has three or four mandates. Sa sa sa, sa amin Hindi lang po kami nasa classroom lang. We are not we are not settled with I don't settle for a for in the four corners of the classroom. We also perform other functions. That's why meron kami designation, that's why I'm a program advisor, may mga tasks or activities or or uh assignments na pinapagawa sa amin. And another thing pa is uh, uh I'm also active in research. Okay? Uh, will in fact, one of the subjects or courses na pinag tinuturo ko sa electronics technology is uh, ELT38 or ELT45, uh, which is all about research. That's why I'm also a research professor. And maliban sa research, actually may ginagawa kami ngayon research where developing instructional material intended for electrical and electronics technology course. And even yung BTB TED, uh, major in electrical technology, students ang, maka- ang makikinabang nito in the future. And not only that, maliban sa instruction research, ako po din is active sa extension. Okay, may ginagawa kami extension project. Pag sinabi natin extension, para siyang community outreach. Sa, sa department po, sa amin, sa programa namin, uh, pumupunta po kami sa BGMP. BGMP stands for Bureau of Jail Management and uh, Phenomenology, something like that. Wherein, nagtuturo kami ng technology courses. Kagaya ng electricity and electronics to PDL. Pag sinabi natin PDL, this pertains or refers to persons deprived of liberty. Kasi dati, ang term nila ginagamit is prisoners. Pero sa tingin ko, in sa pagkakalam po, hindi po akma or maganda gamitin ang salitang prisoner. These are, they are human beings too. They deserve a second chance. Whether gaano man kabigat yung nagawa nilang kasananan, they are so human beings. So para sa akin, gumawa ko ng extension activity para bigyan sila ng panibagong opportunity once they are pre or out of the cell. So, kami po, I, every Saturday, start probably by this September, mag-umpisa na kami, magtuturo kami ng mga uh, PDL. Okay? So, mas magandang, gami, magandang gamitin ang term na PDL. So, ulitin ko, PDL stands for Persons Deprived of Liberty. So, sila po yung mga students namin. Tinuturoan namin sila kung paano mag paano gumawa ng electronics project, and we discuss about theories and principles about electronics and electricity. Okay? So, uh, um, for my background, just like you also, class, uh, I'm a graduate of BSIE, major in electronics technology. Yung BSIE class is an old course na, na ngayon ay BTBTED. Okay? Ang BSIE stands for Bachelor of Science in Industrial Education. Yan po ang lumang pangalan ng BTB TED na ngayon. Okay. Uh, graduate po ako, 2007. And uh, before that, hindi pa ako agad nagtrabaho sa BU. May ibang, uh, I work in a government for just in a short span of time or months ata or years lang. Bago ako nabigyan ng opportunity na makapagturo sa BUSIT. And... Uh, konting trivia, ako din po is nag-aral ng law. I took up my LLB or Bachelor of Laws uh, sa Bicol College kasi wala pa doon ang BU, di pa nag-offer ng LLB. Uh, 2009. 
Okay, so hindi ko siya natapos um, kasi uh, yung nagpaparal sa akin that time was my parents. Uh, particularly is yung nanay ko. Unfortunately, uh, my mother got sick. Um, she was diagnosed with uh, stage 4 cancer. So, hindi po nat- hindi ko natapos yung aking um, law. So, instead, uh, I pursue masteral. After uh, once na hire ako sa BU, uh, nag, uh, my dean, actually it's my former dean who encouraged me to engage in teaching. Siguro yung, yung, yung pananaw ko before, parang kayo. I think kasi alam ko dito yung iba sa atin, kahit hindi ko pa nakilala ng buo, ayaw magturo. I was once just like you. Kasi I, during my time, I'm, I'm confused. Parang I'm into soul searching. Ano ba yung career ang gusto kong gagawin? Kasi ang iba sa atin, alam ko rin, parang hindi still na nalilito kung ano ba ang gusto nila after they, uh, they, they finish the program. But uh, when I was hired, nahira ko sa, sa, sa busit, hindi, pa, hindi para magturo, but to do paperwork. I work sa this dean's office uh, para mag-prepare ng mga documents, prepare ng paper presentations for research and other uh, things. Pero uh, I was convinced by madam, nung dati kong dean, na magturo. So she was given, uh, I was given the opportunity to teach uh, uh, bitibited subjects. Hanggang tuloy-tuloy na. So, uh, in God's grace, uh, Uh, up to now, uh, 10 years na po ako dito sa teaching na to. So, ang point ko lang sa inyo is, up sana, kahit second year pa lang kayo, uh, sana i-program nyo ng sarili ninyo. I-project nyo na kung ano ba yung magiging career ninyo pagdating. I don't want to dictate, I don't want to influence, but uh, I'll just, our role talaga is to guide you. Okay. Hindi naman kami yung parang nagmamandate sa inyo, ah, magturo ka kasi bitibited ka. That's not my mentality. At the end, kayo pa rin magdi-decide para sa akin of what will be your future after uh, after this. Okay? So, uh, yeah, 10 years ako sa uh, teaching. And I'm happy, though it's challenging. But still, ito yung aking uh, profession na, tinu- na tinatahak. And, and up to now, I'm enjoying even though maraming tasks or activities na pinapagawa. For as long andun yung spirit mo, yung gusto mo talaga. Para para sa iyo, madali, madali lang gawin niya. Okay? So, before we end, do you have, again, do you have any questions or clarifications about the things that I said here sa ating uh, Google Meet? Is it clear to you? Do you have any questions for or clarifications? Class? Clear po, sir. Okay. Po, sir. Wala na po, sir. Ah, sige, sige. So, if it's clear already, uh, class, um, can we have a, uh, ako okay lang sa inyo, ano? Okay po ba sa inyo? Ay, kung sa bagay, hindi ko pa malalaman. Pwede after kay ma'am, inform na ako kung magkakaroon kayo ng face-to-face meeting next week. Okay lang ba? Okay sige, sige. Kasi kung meron kayong face-to-face kay ma'am next week, um, pasabay man, para at least isa na, para hindi magkaroon tayo ng zebra effect, yung parang uh, face-to-face, mamaya, online, face-to-face, parang, para hindi kayo din mahirapan. Okay? So, before we end, isend ko muna yung link uh, ng attendance, and can we have a photo ops after this, uh, na, nag-conduct ako ng sick meeting, and para makilala ko rin kayo. Okay? So, uh, please let me know sa ating in-call messages or comment section if you receive the link for our attendance or for your attendance. Nakikita po ba, class? Yes, po. Yes, po, sir. Okay. Pa-access na po. Kasi once I leave, hindi nyo na po ito ma-access. So, uh, this point in time, you are now allowed to click the link and uh, have with you your attendance. And based on my, um, while, while having your attendance po, based on my records po, galing sa faculty center, 
I have here 32 students or 32 BTB TED FSM students enrolled for EDOC 5 teaching in uh, technology for teaching and learning one. So, tama ba ako? Even from other courses, ganyan po ba yung number of students natin or klase natin? 32 po ba? May nag-stop po ba o may nag-drop sa inyo ngayon? May I ask? Uh, yung iba po nag-shift tapos yung iba po naglipat ng school. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Tama po ba? Ilan kayo dati or last last year, last sem? Kasi dito sa aking record, 32 kayo. Yes? 36 po at 36 po ata. Ah, okay. So, nalagasan tayo ng mga 4 or 5. Uh, thank you. Class, are you done? Para makapag-prepare din kayo sa next course ninyo kay yes, ma'am. Yes po. So, can we have a photo ops po? And can you please turn on your camera? Yung sa akin po, naka-off siya. Pero sa mamaya, once you receive the record of this video, makikita nyo po ako. Sige. Eyes on. Can you open your camera? Eyes on the monitor? Or on your screen? Okay. Um... um May I invite the others po to please turn on their camera para makita ko at makilala ko din po kayo. Sige. I think, Miss Rona, are you there po? Paramdam ka naman. Pagalawin mo yung baso. Okay. Nandito na tayo sa exciting part. Yung uwi na. <laughs> Sige. One, two. Spell naman po tayo. Kahit kunwari lang. One, two, three, smile. Uh, check ko, send ko muna kung naka, kung naka, kung na-print screen ko siya. Okay lang po, in a short while. Okay. Last. Uh, can we have another set? Last na to, ano? Okay. Um, Patrick, but madilim ata yung, 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 yung profile. Account, saan ka po ba? Asa? Okay, sige, don't worry. Okay, I just understood naman po. One, two, three, smile. Thank you, class. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you for listening and for their participation. Uh, may I just wait for the uh, result mamaya. Ano okay, ma'am? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Okay. Goodbye. Ingat. Thank Keep you, safe. Po. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Keep safe, po, everyone. Okay, that's how uh, we end our uh, first meeting. I hope it's, it is clear for everybody uh, about uh, course syllabus uh, uh, what are the topics to be covered and what are uh, things you need to comply or accomplish and even the grading system for transparency so that you, uh, you have an idea of how CERCNG will provide you a fair rating after you, uh, you finish this uh, course so class if you have some more if you can uh, uh you can if, if you have if you're, if you're still confused if you have something to ask about our course our lessons our activities even the content of our syllabus feel free to message me or contact me ito po yung aking contact details so again thank you for this thank you for ta thanks for your time thank you for listening and what and based from what i always say um keep safe Always. Zombie Apocalypse.